Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Hello, good evening, and welcome. And off we go again on a Saturday evening. Look at some of the best sounds in modern and contemporary jazz. Yes, can you believe it? It is once again time for Jumping In, the best in modern and contemporary jazz with myself, H. And me, Chris. Yes, welcome along to this week's show in a week when changing coloured lights have been seen in the sky by many island residents, with some even reporting colours other than red, amber and green. Yes, the northern lights have made a showing as spring continues springing in its usually springy way. And it's another weekend for celebrations, as tomorrow is Mother's Day, which you may or may not know started life in West Virginia as a day of worship for mothers as far ago as 1907, before it became known as Hallmark Day, when the Hallmark Greeting Squad Company realised commercial potential of it back in 1920. Made me think, how many special days now exist? There is, of course, International Jazz Day, but not until April the 30th. As I'm sure I'm aware, though, however, today is not only National Meatball and National Crab Meat Day, but also Panic Day, Get Over It Day, and perhaps more importantly, National Barbie Day. So, H, which artists have kept you in the pink this week as you've channeled your inner Ken, and which have been just a lot of crabby balls? Well, um, I'm going to have some words unspoken. A new one from John Sermon. Always a case for celebration as far as I'm concerned. We're going to have a bit of third stream coming up from uh, Bill Lawrence and uh, a man we haven't had on the show for a long time, Tom Harrell. And for me, well, we're twinned twice. We have a birthday boy in the picture. We're going feeling the nip as we have a splash. And to kick things off, we go walk about with David Lissick and friends with Wurrum Gala Wurrum Moi.
Very good indeed. Wurum Gala, Wurum Mwa, which I'm sure you know if you've been brushing up on your Aboriginal dialect, means where do you come from? Where are you going? Did you pick it up, H, on your trip to Oz recently? Uh, Australian jazz? No, I didn't. Uh, Aboriginal such, dialect, I, I meant, actually. Oh, Aboriginal, uh, yeah, yeah, Wirra Wirra, which I think is Place of the Gumtree. Yeah, very good. Mm. Taken from Walkabout, the 2012 release from Canadian trumpeter, composer and band leader Dave Lizick and the Jazz Groove Mothership Orchestra, one of Australia's longest-running large jazz ensembles. And they feature many young up-and-coming players, but they regularly have guest soloists. In this case, trumpeter Alex Sipaigan, who never disappoints in my experience, and sax man Bob Shepard. The album is released on the New Zealand label Rattle Records, who have a fantastic collection of jazz recordings, if you don't know them, and they're worth seeking out. Well worth seeking out, as ever, as is pretty much anything and everything, in my book at least, from the great British Reeds man John Sermon, 80 years young. Uh, now, would you believe, I've been listening to him for, well, it must be a good 40 of those, and he's been going for another good 20 or more beyond that, I think. Came out in the 1960s, uh, heading up to the London scene from his home down in sort of Devon, Tavistock Way. And uh, we believe, when we did a brief interview with him uh, oh, a few years back at the London Jazz Festival, it is true that the fact he started out on the unwieldy and rather massive baritone saxophone, because he thought when he went to buy a saxophone in a shop window, there was that and a tenor, and they were roughly the same price, so he thought he was getting more bang for his book by buying the baritone. He made it his own instrument and played all sorts. No one really taught him, particularly when he started out, and he said, well, I didn't know you were meant to play those high notes, so I just played them, uh, and has gone on to make the instrument his own, but plays a multitude of reeds and famous now through lots of collaborations, uh, Stu Martin and Barra Phillips, and then a whole host of wonderful albums on ECM, of which this is his latest. Finds him in the company of young British guitar wunderkind Rob Luft, uh, Rob Waring on the vibes, and uh, Thomas Strillen, uh, again, who has been uh, over on the Isle of Man, in fact, a wonderful player, plays a lot with Ian Ballamy, with food, of course, amongst other places, on drums and percussion, and I don't think any electronics on this, but he uses a lot of electronics often, uh, Thomas. It's Fine's Sermon back on cracking form, as far as I'm concerned, uh, after his last album, which I thought was a little lacklustre. Let's hear Pebble Dance. <laughs> Thank you. 
Indeed. Enjoying that very much indeed. The opening track on John Sermon's new album, Words Unspoken, on ECM. It was released um, middle of last month, I think around about the 16th of February. So in your favourite record shop, stroke, download, wherever you get them these days. Um, well, already long since, I dare say. If you can get it on vinyl as well, all the better. Um, good to see that still real media uh, persisting alongside our uh, streaming friends. Anyway, great stuff. I really enjoyed that. As I say, the previous release, which again featured the vibes, I think, of uh, Rob Waring, I just thought it was nice, but sort of nice would be damning it with faint praise. I just thought it didn't feel very edgy. It felt a little bit too much like music, I thought, here and there. I don't know. This one... Right back on form, I think. There's much more edginess to it, more blowing, a bit more sort of, you know, taking a few chances here and there. I love the fact that the sort of the vibes in place, like the beginning of that one, is almost used the same way that Sermon used to use uh, the synth when he did so many of his solo albums, like Upon Reflection, a whole series of them in in the sort of 80s, 90s and early 2000s. Just him with a a synthesizer, ostinato and such like. So you get that sort of same effect done live. And Thomas Strunen very... Again, a sort of mix between, well, I don't know, between sort of Paul Motion and Jan Christensen and, and Jack DeJanette in many ways. He can sort of cover those bases and does use electronics to great effect as well. I'd be interested to hear him using electronics with John Sermon as well. Terrific stuff. Uh, well worth checking out and like is the long, latest in a long series of albums from John Sermon. 80 this very year and uh, long May he continue. Recorded uh, in December 2022. And if you're lucky enough, I don't know where we'll catch them, but I sincerely hope we will. They are on a uh, European tour this year, so fingers crossed. And remember when we first saw him, I think, at Bracknell all those years ago, he was a very uh, early investor in electronics to support himself playing sequences, either with a uh, synthy a suitcase or, indeed, with a Minimoog. And I nearly, uh, I bid on a Minimoog on eBay once that turned out to be John Sermon's old one. A lot of the knobs were breaking off it, but, uh, yeah, didn't uh, didn't make a high enough bid. Next from me, a uh, recent release on Ubuntu Records by saxophonist Rob Cope. It's called Gemini, not so much about twins, but... But the number two, it's Rob's second album. There's one, two. It features two saxes uh, made up of two existing duos. Rob and fellow saxophonist Andy Scott, who's a leader in his own right with his group S, which has, I think, nine saxophonists in it. And uh, pianist Liam no- uh, Noble with drummer Paul Clarvis. Here's the title track, Gemini. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gemini from saxophonist Rob Cope and his quartet. Rob composed all 12 tracks on the disc and they're all short pieces like that, lasting from just over a minute to around four minutes at the longer end, but still give ample opportunity for the soloist to shine and indeed to explore some fairly free improvisation. Listening to the variety of style, it's obvious... I think that Rob was classically trained and he creates these wonderful frameworks when he uh, moves into the jazz sphere, allowing lots of repeated listenings to this album. You'll find something new every time. Highly recommended. Gemini, Rob Cope. Terrific stuff. You're listening to Jump In In here on Max Radio. Chris and myself, H, with you through until the top of the hour, 10 o'clock. And don't forget, of course, you can catch all the music and listen where and when you want via the podcast, which will be available by the Max Radio website or your favourite podcast provider straight off the back of this programme. Uh, Tom Harrell, a man that I've enjoyed his playing for quite a number of years. I can't remember the last time we featured him on the programme, quite a while back under his own name, certainly, although he has played with a host of giants over the years. Uh, well, you name it, really. Woody Herman's big band, Stan Kenton, Horace Silver. He's played with Lee Konitz, George Russell, Mel Lewis... Uh, I didn't realise, I must admit, that he actually played with Vince Guaraldi on some of the Peanuts television specials doing trumpet work there. He was on You're Not Elected, Charlie Brown, There's No Time for Love, a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, they're great cartoons those if you haven't seen them, and has also performed with Bill Evans, Dizzy Gillespie, Jim Hall, the list goes on and on and on. But he's done numerous albums under his own name. I've only got a selection of them, although every time I hear them I think, wow, I must get some more. Like this one, 2019, uh, and this is a track from the album Infinity. It's called The Fast.
Cracking. Haven't heard that for quite some time. Really, really good stuff. As indeed it should be when you look at the lineup. Tom Harrell, leader on a trumpet and flugel there by the sound of it, I think. Mark Turner, brilliant sax player on a tenor. Charles Atura on their guitar and electric. Ben Street at the bass, the great Jonathan Blake uh, at the drums and Adam Cruz at percussion. So you'd expect something reasonably good from a lineup like that, it has to be said. And I think uh, you got it there. 2019, the album Infinity in a track called The Fast. A, a great player, like I said, perhaps never quite gets the accolades he should or maybe as famous because he has always struggled throughout his life with um, episodes of schizophrenia. It's been something he's managed to, to make a career very successful on a music, as a musician. But uh, I've, I've only seen him once live and again he was, I think it depends where he might be, but at that time he sort of you know, hit, almost hid from the audience. He was playing, but he'd play rather like Miles, almost sort of facing away from the audience and when he wasn't taking a solo he'd quite often sort of hide behind a, a speaker stack and such like. So Clearly, I think he has struggled with that side, unfortunately, of his personality, but the musical side has been brilliant and kept him going for so long. And when you can produce music like that, well, goodness me, absolutely wonderful stuff. I'd love to see him live again at some stage. In his 70s now, but uh, fingers crossed, uh, well, like I said, we just heard Sermon in his 80s almost, so uh, hopefully there's plenty of life yet in Tom Harrell. I'd love to see him again. And I promised you a birthday boy at the top of the show. And he's someone who's not only featured in many guises on this show, but has also been one of the leading lights of the ECM label. Not only as a leader, but in numerous supporting roles. Who is it? I hear you ask. Well, have a listen and see if this can put you in the picture.
Did you guess? Well, if you're a regular listener to this show, you should have guessed that that was the inimitable Jan Gobarik, who turned 77 last Monday. That was the picture, taken from the 1978 release, photo with blue sky, white cloud wires, windows and a red roof, inspired by the poetry of William Carlos Williams, and each element of the cover picture is described uh, in a, a, as a, the inspiration for each individual track on the album. There are so many great ones to choose from, uh, over over 70 albums, if you combine those with a leader or as a group member, but for me, my favourite ones certainly are probably around the middle of the 70s, including that one. And this one was the first one that ECM say was recorded as the name of the Jan Gaberic group, with a great lineup: Bill Connors on guitar, the fabulous John Taylor on piano, Eberhard Weber on bass, John Christensen on the drums, and of course, Jan on the sax. All the music on the album has that light, spacious, almost transparent character where time slips by unnoticed. Fabulous. Happy birthday, Jan. Hi there, this is John Sermon and you're listening to Jumping In on Manx Radio.
classic from way back when. Hugh Hopper, Alan Gown, two Rome boats daily, fish tank one. And before that, a new one from Michael Lawrence on the ACT label, uh, very much going into third stream territory, I think. It's his uh, second on the ACT label. They've got so many great artists there now. Uh, marking the transition, as they say, from the smallest possible form of musical interaction, namely a duo, to a large-scale broadband format with Bill Lawrence and the Untold Orchestra, and a track called All At Once. And you'll have to wait a wee while to get that one, because its release date is the 26th of April. But they've got such a roster of artists now, and act it's untrue. Well, that's about it for this week's show, but we've just time to fit in a track from London-born saxophonist and composer Joshua Jaswan, who was so disgusted with Brexit and the impact on artists that he moved to Berlin to pursue his dreams as a band leader and composer. Polar Waters is his octet's uh, second release, and the album continues upon themes developed with their first release, Silent Sea, of ecology and populism, only centred around oceanic themes, with vocal treatments of modern poems by Anna Cerise. I'd like to thank, uh, dedicate this track to the brave sea swimmers around the island. Uh, Christy and her pals, what do they call themselves? Uh, well, I don't Mer-pals. know what they call themselves. The Mer- the Christy Mer-pals. and the Mer Pals in Peel, the, the Frozen Fannies in Ramsey, uh, and in Douglas and Laxey, the Blue Tits. Here's Swimming in Winter. See you next week. It's positively innocent, doesn't it? Indeed. See you then. Cheerio. Bye for now.